Hello, Clinic Review family. So glad to see you back here again. Uh, I'm Dr. Sharon, and I'm a reviewer for Clinic Reviews, the very best NCLEX review class that is available today, in my opinion. So if you enjoy this uh, channel and you have, or, and or if you've taken a Clinic Review, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of good stuff here that you can watch to help you get ready to pass your NCLEX. Today, we're going to be talking about acid base. We've gotten a lot of requests to do acid base and electrolytes. And I have to be careful that I don't do anything that we provide in the clinic review because people pay to take the clinic review and it wouldn't be fair to them to then provide it for free here on our channel. So I have to kind of pick and choose what I do on here but there's a ton of really good information you can find here that we specifically do not cover in the clinic review. And today I'm going to be talking about the acronym ROME, R-O-M-E. So let me get started with that. This is not specifically the acid base acronym that we teach in clinic reviews. We actually teach it a different way. And I do think the way we teach it in clinic reviews is slightly better, but I know there's a lot of people out there who will never be able to afford to take a clinic review. And ROME as the acronym is um, one that is quite helpful. And so I want to make sure that you know how to use it. So let's go ahead and first of all, talk about just ABGs in general. And if you're taking notes, I, I would suggest that you go ahead and write these numbers down. You have to know for the NCLEX, you have to know these numbers. Normal pH is 735 to 745. And if it's low, that's acidosis. And if it's high, that's alkalosis. Okay, so make sure that you know those, those words. If it's below 735, that's acidosis. It's above, above 745, it's alkalosis. And, and the reason we care about acid base is because people die when their pH is low or high, literally. The biochemical processes in the body don't work as well when, the, um, when it's an acidic or an alkalotic environment. So we need to make sure that the pH in the body is between three, five and four, five. The PCO2 is easy to remember because that's 35 to 45, the same numbers as the, the ABGs. The PO2 is 80 to hundred. That's both of those are in millimeters of mercury and the bicarb is 22 to 26. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time today talking about this partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide, but I do wanna make a note that it is measured in millimeters of mercury. And if it, this should be familiar to you because millimeters of mercury is how we measure blood pressure right? When you, when you put this big manometer around the arm and you pump it up, we get, we get a pressure. And it's the same way we measure CO2 and O2 in the blood. This is an arterial blood gas, right? ABG stands for arterial blood gas. And it's the same way we measure these pressures of CO2 and O2 in the body. Now, whether you understand that or not, I suppose um, you could just know what the numbers are supposed to be and you could learn what's normal and what's not normal. But I just, just because I think it's really super helpful to me as a nurse to understand it, each, each molecule, carbon molecules, oxygen molecules, they exert a certain amount of pressure. And you can measure that pressure. We don't know where that pressure comes from. We just know that if you get, let's say you have a bottle, let's say if I have an empty bottle here and I put five molecules of oxygen in there, those five molecules of oxygen are going to exert a certain amount of pressure against the inside of that bottle. And if I put five more molecules of oxygen there, that's going to exert even more pressure. And we know that in order for oxygen and carbon dioxide to cross the alveolar capillary membrane, that's that the alveoli in the lungs and the blood runs next to the alveoli, right? And, and the oxygen has to, we breathe it in, it has to go into the alveoli and cross over to the blood so it can be carried. And we know that the blood carries the CO2 back to the lungs and the CO2 has to cross the blood from the blood into the alveoli so that the CO2 can be blown off, right? In oxygen, out carbon dioxide, in action, out carbon dioxide. And so we know that has to happen. That's the primary job of the lungs is to exchange gases. And so we know that there has to be a certain amount of pressure exerted by the, the number of molecules. There has to be enough molecules that it will exert enough pressure that it'll move across that capillary membrane, alveolar capillary membrane. Otherwise it just sits there and doesn't go anywhere. So I just wanted you to know why millimeters of mercury is 
um, is the measurement for CO2 and O2. And then the bicarb is 22 to 26. And honestly, I don't know what the measurement of that is. That's just a measurement amount in the body. It's not a pressure. Okay, now there's two different concepts you have to understand there's, that are different. There's acid base, which is when we look at the pH and the bicarb. And there's, there's respiratory failure when we look at the PO2 and the PCO2. Remember, the primary job of the lungs is to exchange gases. If the gases are not being exchanged, then the lungs are failing. That's why when the PO2 and the PCO2 are not correct, not in the correct pressures that we measure, when they're not right, we say it's the lungs are failing. They're failing to exchange um, oxygen, carbon dioxide. So if the CO2 is too high, the lungs are failing to get rid of the CO2. If the O2 is too low, the lungs are failing to bring in enough CO2 for the body, right? So we call that respiratory failure. But today we're not talking about respiratory failure. I'm going to do a completely different lecture on respiratory failure. Today we're only going to focus on acid base. And when we talk about acid base, we look at the pH and the bicarb. Because I told you that the body's biochemical processes will not function correctly when the patient is too acidic or too alkalotic. And so we monitor that. That's acid base. The PO2 and the CO2 are not what we look at to determine whether the patient is acidotic or alkalotic. We look at the pH. And the reason we look at the bicarb is because it tells us whether there's any buffering going on, right? If it's too acidotic and, and the bicarb, is it buffering? Is it not buffering? And so forth. All right. So this is what we're going to talk about. We are not, 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 not going to focus on the O2 and the CO2. And I want you to know why we're not going to focus on that because O2, CO2 is, is talking about respiratory failure. It's not talking about acid base. And I know you're probably saying, well, don't you have to know what the CO2 is to know whether it's respiratory or metabolic? You actually don't. You actually don't. We're going to focus on the pH and the bicarb. All right. So Rome means, this is what the acronym means, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. I'm going to say it like five more times so you remember it. Respiratory opposite metabolic equal, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So when the respiratory is opposite, that means, because we're only talking about pH and bicarb, that means the pH and the bicarb are going in the opposite directions. If the pH is down, the bicarb is up. If the pH is up, the bicarb is down. Okay. That's how you know it's a respiratory problem, or as Mark Klimek likes to say, respiratory. Metabolic equal means pH and the bicarb are equally high or equally low. It doesn't mean they both have to be off by four points or six points. It means they're both low or they're both high. Respiratory opposite metabolic equal. So let's look at a couple of examples to show you what that means. Remember, respiratory opposite metabolic equal, respiratory opposite metabolic equal. pH, 7.48, the bicarb is 30. So is the pH high or low? Well, it's high. Is the bicarb high or low? The bicarb is supposed to be 22 to 26. So it's high, right? So they're both high, respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. Well, they're both equally high. So this has to be a metabolic problem. And we know the pH is high, so it's alkalosis. So it's metabolic alkalosis. All right, pH of 7.19. Well, pH is 7.35 to 7.45. So the pH is low and bicarb is 19. Well, bicarb is supposed to be 22 to 26. So the bicarb is also low. So they're both low. They are equally low. Respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. They are equally low. And the pH is low, so it's acidosis. So it's a metabolic acidosis. All right, pH is 7.52. Well, that's high, right? 7.35 to 7.45 is where it's supposed to be. So 7.52 is high and the bicarb is 15. So the, uh, the bicarb is supposed to be 22 to 26. So it's low. So the pH is high and the bicarb is low. Now, when you have a high pH, what is that? Acidosis or alkalosis? That's alkalosis. So it's an alkalosis, but what kind of alkalosis? Well, respiratory opposite. So it's a respiratory alkalosis. All right, let's go ahead and do the next one. 
All right, pH of 7.27 and a bicarb of 32. So a pH of 7.27 is supposed to be 735 to 745. So it's low, which makes it acidotic. So this is an acidosis. We know that just by looking at the pH. The bicarb is 32. Bicarb is supposed to be 22 to 26. So bicarb is high. So we have a low pH and a high bicarb. So respiratory opposite, metabolic equal. So the pH is low, so it's an acidosis but they're in opposite direction. So it's a what? It's a respiratory, respiratory acidosis. Okay. You got that? Those are our practice. This is this whole, this whole um, video is just about using Rome to answer questions. Okay. So let's go to a question. A client's ABG shows the following pH of 730. PO2 of 88, PCO2 of 48, P bicarb of 35. How will you interpret these findings? Metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis. So what is the first thing that we do? Well, first of all, we don't pay attention to the PO2 and the CO2. We don't look at it. And you can say, but that's how I learned it. Look, if you learned it a specific way that really helps you, you, learn, you do it the way you learned it. But what I'm telling you is that this does work and you don't have to look at the O2 and the CO2 when you're talking acid base. It's not asking you if they're hypoxic. It's not asking you if they're hypercapnic. It's not asking you if they're in respiratory failure. It's saying acid base. So when it's acid base, you say pH and bicarb. So we're not going to pay attention to the PO2. Now we know the pH is low, right? If you look over here on the right, it says pH down, bicarb up. So the pH is below 735. So that's acidosis, which means we can cross off all the alkalosis options. Just cross them off. The pH is low. We're not even going to consider them. So we know it's either metabolic or respiratory acidosis. So you can at least get it down to a 50-50 shot. Now, the second thing we do is we look at the bicarb and the bicarb is up. So respiratory opposite metabolic equal. Well, they're in the opposite direction. So it has to be respiratory acidosis. It has to be. Now, I would suggest when you're taking NCLEX, if you choose to use Rome as your strategy, when you get a question like this, you write down respiratory opposite metabolic equal, and then make sure you're following that so you don't get it mixed up. All right, you're caring for a client whose ABG show the following, pH of 7.28, PO2 of 65, PCO2 of 35, bicarb of 12. Which of the following acid-base imbalances are you most concerned about? Okay, metabolic acidosis, compensated metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis, compensated respiratory acidosis. Okay. So compensated is not generalist knowledge. So you really don't have to know compensated to pass NCLEX. Um, and, and the reason this is here is because this is not a compensated question. It, those are distractors. There's nothing here. This is not a compensated problem. So here's what you need to know when you get compensated as one of the options. Okay. So if you're writing, taking notes, this is what you have to know about compensated. Compensation is all about the pH. Remember, remember people die in acidotic or alkalotic environments because the biochemical processes don't work. So the body tries to compensate for the disturbance. So when it says compensated, it means it's compensating for the lower high pH, which means the pH, if it's compensated, the pH is normal. That's what compensation is. Compensation means, if it says it's compensated, it means it's normal. The pH is normal. Now the other things are off, but the pH is normal. So you never pick compensated if the pH is abnormal. Again, if you're taking notes, you write down, never pick compensated if the pH is abnormal. So let's look at this again. You're caring for a client whose ABG show the following pH is 7.28. Well, 7.28 is not normal. So we are not going to pick the compensated options. Those are not our options. The, the pH is low. It's supposed to be 7.35 to 7.45 and it's low so that we know it has to be one of the acidosis options. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to cross off two and four. We're going to say, well, it's got to be either one or three. So then we look at the bicarb because we're not going to worry about the O2 and the CO2. We look at the bicarb. We say the bicarb is equally low. They're both low. Bicarb is supposed to be 22 to 26 and it's low. So respiratory opposite 
metabolic equal, equal, right? And they're equally low. So it has to be, it has to be the metabolic acidosis. Okay, next question. Your client is experiencing respiratory alkalosis. Which of the following ABG results would you expect? Okay, respiratory alkalosis. Now, let's first focus on the alkalosis. Okay, alkalosis means the pH is, is it high or low? In alkalosis, the pH is high. So we are going to cross off any options where the pH is low. Okay, we're going to cross off any options where the pH is low. So we're going to cross off one and three because one and three, the pH is low. 7.18 is low. 7.24 is low. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say, well, two and four have high pHs. So those are both alkalosis, right? So we're okay with that. Now, we have to remember that respiratory opposite metabolic equal. So we want, if we are looking for respiratory alkalosis, we want a bicarb that's in the opposite direction. So the pH is high. So that means the bicarb, if it's going to be opposite, it has to be low. So in two, number option two, we have a pH of 7.5 and a bicarb of 65. Well, the bicarb is 65 is high. In four, the pH is 749, so that's high. And the bicarb is low. It's supposed to be 22 to 26. It's 15, so that's low. So we want them to be respiratory opposite. So which one does it have to be? So here we have number four as the correct answer. So first determine if it's acidosis or alkalosis, right? That's what I did. pH is low or pH is high. And then respiratory, pH and bicarb are opposite metabolic. pH and bicarb are equally low or equally high. I already talked about that. Now, these questions will be specifically talking about acid base. So this is just sort of a summary of what we've talked about. So when you get a question that is specifically asking about acid base, you don't look at the oxygen and the CO2. These are not questions about hypoxia, not questions about oxygenation. They're not questions about hypercapnia. They're not necessarily questions about carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is hypercapnia. The hypercapnia means high carbon dioxide. So acid-base questions are specifically going to say acid-base disorder. They may say metabolic acidosis, which, which ABGs reflect metabolic acidosis. Or it may say, which acid-base disorder do you expect based on these ABGs? But they're gonna, you're going to see the words acid-base, in which case you say, ah, acid-base Rome. I'm going to use that one, okay? Now I wanted to go one more question. And this, if you're like, oh no, I get this. I get it, Rome. I get it. I'm going to practice it and see if it works. Um, then stop here. Okay. Stop here. And you don't have to keep going on. But if you're like, no, I really get this. I'd like to have a harder question to see what Sharon, Dr. Sharon has to say about these harder questions. So if you want to, like, you can follow along with one harder question. And we're going to do this one. It's a little bit different. It's not specifically an acid-based question, but what we learned can help you answer this question, okay? The nurse reviews an arterial blood gas report for a client with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The results are as follows, pH 7.35, CO2 62, PO2 70, bicarb 34. What should the nurse do first? Oh, what do I do about this? It doesn't say what is the acid-base imbalance. Apply 100% non-rebreather mask, assess the vital signs, reposition the client or prepare for intubation. All right. So first of all, and this is, you don't have to do this to get the answer right, but I want to analyze these ABGs. And remember, this is a harder question. Okay. So let's analyze these ABGs. First of all, we have a pH that's low normal, low normal. Okay. So we have a pH that's low normal. And we have a bicarb that's supposed to be 22 to 26, and it's high. So we have a pH that's low normal and a bicarb that's high. Now we have a CO2. We don't usually look at the CO2, but this, we're, this is a different type of question, right? So the CO2 is supposed to be 35 to 45. So the CO2 is high and there's COPD. So we go, well, that's not totally unexpected, but it's pretty high, 35 to 45. I might expect it to be 50, but 62, that's really high. And the PO2 is low. It's 70. It's supposed to be 80 to 100. And that's low. So we have, we have gases that are not being exchanged correctly. 
and we have a high bar bicarb and a low normal pH. So this is what uh, this is just what I want to show you. And you don't have to know this to pass NCLEX, but I told you it's a harder question if you're interested in this. When the pH is low, normal, and the bicarb is high. Now we have a normal pH, but our, our pH and bicarb are still in the opposite directions. Do you notice that? Even though it's low, normal, it's still low. It's low, normal, but it's low, normal. And then the bicarb is high. This is actually compensated respiratory acidosis. Because remember I said, you don't pick compensated unless the pH is normal, but it's low normal and the bicarb is high. So that's how you know whether it's compensated respiratory or metabolic, because you look to see which end of the normal spectrum the pH is. If it's low normal, I go, well, that's low normal. <clears throat> or if it's high, and then you look to see whether the bicarb is in the same direction or the opposite direction. So here we have respiratory opposite, right? So this is actually, because the pH is normal, we actually know this is compensated respiratory acidosis. Now, the problem is that's not what the question is asking. If it was asking it, this would be like, sweet, I got it right. But then they say, what should you, what should you do first? <clears throat> now, the reason I wanted to analyze the ABGs is just so that you know that when someone's compensating, this, these are not good ABGs. They're, they're not exchanging gases like they should be right? The, the CO2 is high, the PO2 is low. So they're not exchanging gases. So they are either in respiratory failure or really close to respiratory failure. They're compensated respiratory acidosis and close to respiratory failure, at the very least respiratory insufficiency. So when I look at this, I go, okay, it seems like if their PO2 is low, uh, giving oxygen might be okay. Assessing the vital signs certainly seems okay. Repositioning the client Maybe, I don't know what position they're in or prepare for intubation. I mean, the reason we intubate people is because they're in respiratory failure. That is the reason we intubate people, y'all. So how am I going to answer this? So let's look at the next, the next thing. So even though they're compensated respiratory acidosis, they're also hypoxic and hypercapnic. But because they're COPD, y'all, listen. Because they're COPD, this, that's why this is a hard question. There's multiple components to this question to analyze. Because they're COPD, I know they have a hypoxic drive to breathe. They have a hypoxic drive to breathe. So if I apply 100% non-rebreather mask, I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see some of those words. If I apply a 100% non-rebreather mask, I could decrease their hypoxic drive to breathe. I could actually reduce their respiratory rate. I don't know what their respiratory rate is, but I'm not sure that I want to reduce it. I mean, they're in compensated respiratory acidosis. So the fact that they're breathing as fast as they are, whatever rate that is, is probably why they're compensated. Okay. So I'm not sure that I want to apply a non 100% non rebreather mask. Now, assessing the vital signs definitely seems like a good idea. So I'm going to keep that on my list. Repositioning the client is possibly a good idea, but I'm not sure how they're positioned. Now, prepare for intubation. Their ABGs don't look good, but they're compensated. So <clears throat> I go back and I reread the question and it says, what would the nurse do first? This is a first question. And I definitely am thinking about intubating them for sure. I'm thinking about that, but that's not what I want to do first. Do you know what I want to really want to do first? Well, let's decide. It's between two or three, right? Because two is a good idea. Three is possibly a good idea. Would I rather pick the one that I know is a good idea or the one that is possibly a good idea? I want to pick the one that I know is a good idea, not the one I think is possibly a good idea. All right. So that's the first thing you do. Now you may go, I could have guessed that. Well, maybe you could have, and that's great, but I wouldn't you rather know the right answer than guess the right answer? All right. All right. So that's the end of this one. Um, I am going to be focusing in the next video. I'm going to be focusing actually on respiratory failure. Okay. And what to do with that. So, or how you, how you analyze that. So, all right. I hope you have a great rest of your day and all my best. See you later.